that feeling of not enough. It's never enough, no matter what. Even when we accomplish something or manifest something, it's immediately on to the next thing because, oh my God, what if this isn't enough? I need to go out and achieve and chase and bring in more and more and more and more until hopefully maybe one day there will finally be a number where it'll be enough for me or a feeling that I'm going to finally feel that is going to give me the sense of this finally being enough for me. I can so relate to this and I know that so many of you can also relate to this as well because it is a completely, I don't like to say the word normal because I like to question what normal is, but let's say it is an expected human experience. It's actually an expected spiritual experience as well. And I'll explain that all in today's episode. But first, I really want to read a quote by Janine Roth. Janine Roth has become one of my favorite authors who wrote one of my favorite books. You know how there's certain books. You guys know I'm an avid reader. I share so many book recommendations. If you follow me on Instagram, it's like nonstop books that I'm reading and referencing and quoting and recommending. There's just something about getting into the mind of someone else, getting into someone else's world and just reading their life experience. Janine Roth wrote one of my favorite books, Women, Food and God. And it has been so instrumental in helping me heal my relationship with food, heal my relationship with my body, really heal my relationship with my ability to feel my feelings and face uncomfortable things in life. It is a book that even though it references compulsive eating and like having negative self-image in terms of your body and struggling to lose weight and constantly being on diets and like the the patterns that lead to that, it can be applied to so many more things, which is why I recommend this book to everyone regardless of, you know, man or woman, regardless of what your issue is. If you have any sort of compulsion to engage in any sort of addiction or any sort of distraction in life, which In this book, she talks about food being a distraction. Highly recommend. So anyway, the quote that I want to reference, the quote that is such a game changer that uh, she talks about in the book, I believe it's from this book. It could be from one of her other books. I'm not sure. I just pulled this off the internet because I remember reading it and I remember being like, this is the best quote I ever fucking read, Uh, sort of, like one of the best. And I want to remember this. So I quickly Googled, you know, what I remembered and her name and it pulled it up. So she says, enough is not a quantity. It's not a number. It's not an amount. It's a relationship to what you already have. I'm going to read that again because this relates exactly to your question, Sri, and everyone else who has this issue of like, why the fuck does it never feel like it's enough? Why am I always focused on lack? Why am I always, always focused on, you know, what's wrong in the world? What's missing? What do I not have yet? the when I haves, when I finally have this amount of money, I'll finally be happy and all those things. Let me read this again to you. Enough is not a quantity. It's not a number. It's not an amount. It's a relationship to what you already have. That's it. That's the fucking key here. And I'll also add here to this quote, it's also a relationship to who you already are, right? Because how you feel about your external world is a reflection of how you feel about yourself. So here's the thing. This is why we do this crazy fucking batshit crazy thing, okay? I've explained this on a physical, like human biological level many times. I'm just going to explain it one more time. And then I want to take it from a spiritual perspective because I feel like I haven't shared enough on why this is so on a spiritual level, like why this happens from a spiritual perspective. And it was actually last weekend when I went to go see Bashar, which I don't know if you guys know who Bashar is. Bashar is apparently an extraterrestrial entity who is channeled by this man named Daryl. 
And he says some really good shit. My mom is obsessed with him. My mom sends me so many videos from Bashar. So when I saw that Bashar was in Sedona, which is literally two hours for me, I'm like, we got to go. We go to Sedona all the time. Let's go see Bashar. And so Bashar actually talked about this too. And I was like, oh my God, you're so right. That is so interesting from the spiritual perspective. It really goes hand in hand. So we as human beings are biologically wired to survive at all costs because if we don't survive, we don't procreate and then the human species dies, right? This makes sense. And part of survival is constantly being on edge and hyper vigilant around what is missing in our lives and what is wrong. Because if we're constantly focused on the positives and we're in kumbaya and everything is great, we have no drive within us as cave women and cave men to go out and hunt and gather food, right? If we're not constantly on edge looking for threats or what could be potential threats, then we die. We simply do not survive. If we're not constantly looking at our relationships with other other people in the tribe, other people in the village, and not not presenting ourselves in a certain way to appeal to the other villagers or the other tribesmen, then we could be kicked out of the village. We can be kicked out of the tribe. We can be kicked out of the cave. And therefore, we do not survive because back then being alone was way less powerful than being in a group. So we're constantly looking for what's missing and what's wrong. And that is just our prehistoric brain. Okay, there's the reptilian brain that you have. We all have a limbic brain, which is the emotional brain, reptilian brain, which is literally instincts, um, both part of the subconscious mind. And then we have our prefrontal cortex, which is the conscious mind, which is the logical mind, the imaginative mind, the analytical mind, this higher mind that has evolved over time where we are able to do more complex things rather than just breathe and like eat food and, you know, poop and have sex, right? <laughs> and, and have emotions. We can experience more complex things. And so we... The, the reptilian brain is always focused on what is missing and what's wrong. And that's why it's so easy for us in our modern day and age, because we have so many more luxuries than we ever had before. We can literally door dash food to our room we can or our home. We can literally order anything on Amazon. We can make social connections on the internet. We literally don't have to leave our house to talk to people. We can FaceTime people, right? We have dating apps. Like we really don't have to work as hard to have access to the things that help us survive, right? And so our brains are fucking bored. And now our brains are just focused on, oh my God, I don't have enough money. I don't have nice enough clothing. I don't have as many friends as I want. And oh my God, I'm afraid I'm going to lose everything, right? Once we feel like we do have something, then it's like, oh my God, I have to hold on because now I'm afraid of losing it. And that's the whole other thing is to the survival brain, loss is the most painful experience and it will avoid loss at literally all costs because loss just means that now I have to utilize my resources again to get what I've already had. And the subconscious mind, the reptilian brain, wants to preserve as many resources as possible. So the fact that something can be lost is a really bad thing. It's a really negative thing. It's like, oh my God, we are wasting our resources now and now you're definitely going to die. Okay? So that's like the extreme that our brains take this to. 